Hello everybody, I'm Blaze Rebecca and welcome back to Lads in Distress on Prince Snow's route and now we're here visiting the village where he uh, has to work here for because he was apparently kicked out of his palace because like he's not allowed back in until we're married. <laughs> Great! Wow, this is beautiful! Indeed it is, but still not as beautiful as you are. Seriously! The, seriously, the cheesy lines! Really! I roll my eyes and I'm holding back a smile and continue taking in the scenery with wide eyes. Underneath the clear blue sky, the green landscape stretches as far as my eyes could see. Frankly, it looks almost as if it came straight out of an oil painting, and part of me wants to touch the grass beneath my toe shoes to make sure they are real. As beautiful as the scenery is, I cannot but be disappointed. What? what? <laughs> Snow notices my friend questions. Is something wrong, Charming? I shake my hand frantically, trying to rephrase the question in my head to make it sound less rude. Uh oh. No, of course not. Your homeland is very captivating. I just thought there would be more snow. I mean, this is Snow Kingdom after all. Wow, you're taking it quite literally. Uh. Oh, okay, now that makes more sense. Ah, uh, well, unfortunately, most of the snow is melted by now, since it's nearing May. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. If we decide to spend winter here instead of in your palace, you'll be able to see the view that Snow Kingdom is famous for. I envision a blanket of white snow on the surface of the landscape, and my eyes wind further in awe at the mental image. I immediately nod in agreement. That sounds perfect. We are definitely staying here this winter. For some strange reason, it just doesn't it just doesn't snow in Lunar Kingdom. So winter is a rather boring affair in my country. Aw oh, man. But it's a, but it's always a lovely white Christmas. I see. You will enjoy living here then. He flashes me a quick smile as we keep on walking. Soon the village comes in, into sight. Snow points out the houses and buildings in the distance to me. This is Frost Village. Nothing fancy, I'm afraid, but it's a quaint little village with very friendly and open villagers. It's a lovely place. I've been working in a tavern there for the past year. Ooh! As soon as we pass the welcome sign at the entrance of the village, I immediately become aware of the people bustling around us with an air of busy determination. Determin- No. <laughs> anyway. I notice some villagers passing the stairs strangely. Or, rather... I am my gown with a critical look, and I smooth the fabric self-consciously. Maybe I should have brought something, something brought along some less flashy gowns with me after all. But in my defense, I wasn't where I wouldn't be staying in Snow's castle with him. Not far away in front of a small house built of stone, there's a group of children playing, cross playing tossing yarn at each other. Oh, okay. One well, of the children looks up as though feeling my gaze on them and peers at us curiously. Even when I'm here, I can see the excitement welling up inside the child. She hurries to her feet and starts rushing over to us. Oh! That may be your guide for the day, Charming. Is there anywhere you would like to visit? Uh, Snow? I point at the child that is sprinting towards us. Snow barely has time to prepare himself before the giggling child leaps into his arms, almost bowling him over. <laughs> Who is this little girl? Could Whoa! Okay! Um... I don't, don't- Whoa, okay, I don't think it's that. Oh heavens, that was not part of the deal. He failed to inform me he has a daughter. I don't think he does. I cannot be a stepmother. I'm too nice to be an evil stepmother. <laughs> don't assume. Most of all, I'm too young to mother anyone. I can barely keep myself under control, you know, loudly yelling at a child. I almost flee from the scene in sheer panic, intent on finding Nicole and ex enlisting his help to escape back to Lunar Kingdom, when the child babbling finally registers in my head. Snow, where have you been? I haven't seen you in so long. Mommy and Daddy said you were busy with some... Princess, did you forget us already? We miss you. Tommy isn't as good at playing hide and seek as you are. He always cheats, too. Will you come play with us today, please? Mommy and Daddy? Oh, <sighs> my racing heart slowly calms. I watch as Snow crouches down and strokes the little girl's head lightly, gently. 
Can I play with you another day, Talia? I have a dear friend with me today, and I promise to show her around. The little girl smiling immediately transforms into a frown as she glares up at me and whines. <laughs> Why? If we want you to play with us now! Wow, spoiled children, you, you know? So I don't mind if you spend some time with them. I'd be happy to explore the village myself. It's not like I can't take care of myself anyway. Do you really not mind? She says she doesn't! Come on, let's go! Hey, it's, it's like, well, gee, thank you. It's like, well, gee, you're welcome to... Or whatever. Before I can react, the child has already dragged Snow away, moving towards her group of little friends. Snow looks back at me with an apologetic smile, nothing in an apology. She's the one who should apologize, not me. Suddenly finding myself alone, I take a moment to watch him settle on the ground with children, laughing good-naturedly as they pile on top of him with enthusiasm. Aww. A smile touches my lips. Well, who would have thought that the flirtatious, roguish Prince Snow would have such patience and kindness for children? Turning away before Snow catches me staring, I decide to venture on the first path I see. I've been wandering around aimlessly, peeking at every shop I come across while waiting for Snow to catch up with me. Finally, I hear a familiar voice be from behind me. Wait, Charming! I'm extremely sorry. The children wouldn't let me go no matter how hard I tried. Uh, I can't express how sorry I am for leaving you alone in a strange, unfamiliar village by yourself. We only only just went one scene over. <laughs> Snow, breathe. I really do not mind. In fact, it is rather reassuring to know that my future husband is so good with children. I expected a smirk, or perhaps another sly remark from him, but instead the look of an inexplicable sorrow returns briefly to his eyes before he s his smiles it in a way. I love children. <laughs> Talia's parents used to give me work when I first came here. I often watched her and her brothers while their parents were busy. That's how we became friends. Even though I work in the tavern now, Talia still invites me over to play with them sometimes. I have been too preoccupied lately to accept the invitation, so I suppose she was a tad overexcited when she ran into me just now. I must apologize again. Don't worry about it. It was probably even more enjoyable exploring this village myself without you here chattering ridiculous flirtations the entire time. I flash him a grin to let him know I'm teasing. He relaxes and seems to sigh with relief. You mean flirtations like this? <laughs> My mo momentary confusion clears up when Snow suddenly presents a beautiful red rose in front of me with a flourish. What? How? Where did you get that? For you, my lady. Giggling and reluctantly charmed, I take the rose from him and sniff it delicately. Thank you. Your charisma has come ahead for demand political manners. Ah, uh, I don't know. Uh, this one. Your charisma must make you very popular with the ladies. Ah, uh, but I have never made such an effort to impress a lady before you. I would go to the ends of Earth for you, my dear princess. Snow bows exaggeratedly, and I laugh, sniffing in the sweet smell of the rose again. If that means I could fi would finally receive a well-deserved break from your awfully cliché remarks, I would demand you to do so. It's perfectly fine to admit you are secretly flattered by my attention, Charming. Never. We stand there for a moment, just smiling at each other in amusement. It might just be my imagination, but there's a touch more genuineness in Snow's coy smile this time. Eventually, Snow breaks the silence. It's almost past noon. Would you be so kind as to let me treat you to a meal as an apology for abandoning you? Hmm, that is an enormous sacrifice on my part, but I suppose I can make this concession. Why, thank you for this great honor, my lady. Come, lead the way. Before I can protest, Nose lightly grabs my hand and starts steering us towards the tavern. Blushing and feeling strangely flustered, I open my mouth to question them, but my words die in my throat when Snow squeezes my hand gently and whispers in an almost intimate manner. I'll make it up to you, I promise. Grinning from the effort, I finally manage to pry my eyes open as I reach for the kettle of coffee. Thank heavens for coffee! 
<laughs> every mon morning or Monday person ever. <laughs> As the hot liquid makes its way slowly down into my stomach, my alertness gradually comes back to me, and with that, I finally become aware of the sound of whispering in the other room. It sounds like a tense argument, albeit with in deliberately low voices so that I can't make out any words even when I try to listen intently. Who's arguing uh, already in such an ungodly hour? Two of the guards? Is that what woke me so early today? Feeling my anger flare up, I set down my cup and marched away to the door, determined to give the guards a stern talking. It's not going to be the guards, is it? Do you know what to- Stopping dead in my tracks, I choke on my words as I hear a distinctly female voice raised in volume, and then Joe Snow's gentle whispering. Oh! A woman? I wasn't aware there were any other females in this house. In the last week I've stayed here, there were never any female visitors here. Is this a stepmother? Did he bring home a love? Oh! Now, 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 hold on. We can't assume the worst. A strange feeling washes over me. It's probably the stepmother for all we know. Or our own mother. I don't know why, but... I should have expected this behavior from him. So this, so this should have come as no surprise at all. Yet I find myself disappointed and oddly upset. Not merely offended at his disrespectful behavior. It's the same inexplicable feeling that drives me to push the door slightly open so I can peek out of the mysterious woman arguing with Snow. To my frustration, Snow is blocking her from my sight, so all I can see is just wavy blonde hair and an arm waving wildly ahead at him as she spoke. Damn it, move aside, Snow. I mumble under my breath, trying to discreetly adjust my angle of vision so I can satisfy my curiosity. The woman unexpectedly raises her voice again, sounding suspiciously close to tears, and I cannot but overhear their conversation. Oh! How could you? How could you avoid me like this after all the nights we spent together? Did they mean nothing to you? Nothing at all? Wait a minute. Is that? No, you know it's not like that. I'm snoring. sorry, Snowflake. I genuinely am. I never meant to hurt you. Please just leave. I thought I made it clear when I ended things with you weeks ago that that would be the last time we ever met. Is it because of the princess you've been chasing after? Listen, Snow, please. Forget the marriage alliance. You only need some princess to make your dreams come true. I can. You know my husband left me more money than I can spend in a lifetime. I can give you anything you want, whether it's jewels or fine clothing or the best line wine in the land. Excuse me! Just come home with me. I was definitely right. That was one of Snow's lovers. Or rather, judging from their conversation, one of his past lovers. And her name apparently is Snowflake. That's... I shake my hand in disbelief, half in amusement. He really is as much as a heartbreaker as the rumors say. Part of me considers stepping out from my hiding place, hoping that my presence would help him chase the girl away. But part of me wants to watch this whole scene unfold. My decision is made for me when Snow replies in a much louder voice than before, his tone cold as ice. I'm sorry. If I ever misled you about my feelings and intentions, I deeply apologize. But it doesn't change my mind about this. Perhaps once upon a time, I would have been tempted by your offer. But not anymore. I appreciate your generosity, but what I want is one thing you can never give me. Please, just leave. Before Charming wakes up, I don't want her to have the wrong idea about me. I need this. I beg you. Don't ruin this only ch one and only chance I have. She whispers something too soft for me to make out, but I'm no longer interested in their conversation. My mind is still trying to process all that I've overheard just now. What was the one thing he wanted? Why was he so vague about it? What exactly is Snow hoping to get out of our alliance? He did say getting back to his rifle crown was merely one of his reasons. I thought it would be the biggest one. But from what I gather, it seems more like an afterthought. There's something important that he's hiding from me. A frustrated sigh snaps me out of my daze. Peeking around the ajar door, I notice that Snow has finally persuaded Snowflake to leave. 
He slumped over in the chair, his head in both his hands. His usual carefree, frivolous demeanor has disappeared into thin air, leaving behind a man who frankly just looks exhausted, with the weight of the world on his shoulders. My suspicion dissipates for the time being, my heart clenching at the sight, before I can change my mind I call out to him. Good morning, Snow. He looks up with a start and a genuine smile lights up his face. Good morning, Charming. Did you sleep well? Um, well, I'm going to save here and we'll get to that in the next part. See ya!